just came out this week, if you don't mind, and then we'll get to our demo. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. You have two days left to get my new book. Well, you have more than two days to get it, but if you want all the bonuses, you'll need to buy it by midnight on Sunday, October 18th, Email your Amazon receipt to chefajbonus at yahoo.com and we'll send you a bunch of bonus recipes that didn't make it in the book, not because they weren't great, because we just didn't have time to put everything in. And the audio files of the book, if you like listening, you won't have to get it on Audible. So I'd like to welcome two guests today. One is a plant-based doctor and one is married to a plant-based doctor and is a PCRM cooking instructor. And they're gonna be doing a recipe demo and telling us about their plant-based journey. Please welcome Dr. Adina Mercer and Sally Kubo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Chef AJ. Well, I'm excited because I, I, I'm meeting Sally for the first time, but I've known Dr. Mercer for years. And what I love about her, other than she's beautiful and brilliant, is that she always supports plant-based events. That's how I met her. She showed up like 11 years ago at the very first event I produced called Healthy Taste of LA. And she always supported our events. She goes to the cruises. She supports all the conferences, even though she's not speaking at them, which I think she should. And I just want to tell you guys that because you can get a lot out of going to these conferences because that's how she met her gorgeous husband. And I hope to hear that story. And, and Sally, tell us a little bit about you. Um, I have been vegan for 20 years. I have been vegetarian for probably 25 plus years before that. Um, my husband is a physician and he has been vegetarian his whole life. Um, he's a little behind me on the vegan front. He became vegan about 10 years ago. And it was actually after I had been begging him for like three years to go on the holistic holiday at sea cruise. Mm -hmm. And when he finally went, that's that's when he became plant-based after hearing all of the physicians with their science and you know dr campbell and dr barnard um that's when he finally decided to join me in being plant-based were you there one of the years that i was a speaker yes actually you <laughs> borrowed my sweater during one of your uh presentations Oh, did I give it back? Because I have a tendency if I like a piece of clothing. Yes, I did give it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, even in the Caribbean, I am always cold. I think I found my dream location in the desert because it's 122 and I'm like, I'm cold. So, <laughs> well, that's so great. Thank you for lending me your sweater. That was very kind. So, Dr. Mercer, you've been plant-based for a pretty long time yourself. I have been. I grew up uh, in a home where we were uh, always vegetarian. And that was great with me because I could never imagine eating an animal. And so that was easy, but through, um, it was quite a while that it took before I was actually introduced to vegan. I remember someone at work saying that his sister was vegan and I asked him what that was. And that was not that long ago, maybe 15 years ago. But after that, as oh. Another, another co-worker mentioned uh, Neil Barnard's group, PCRM, in Washington, and got me into the Good Medicine magazine. So from that, I got the invitation to attend their uh, yearly meetings. Once I started attending that, I questioned my own level of health and what was possible. And so I started to gradually, um, I also read the book, The China Study by Dr. Campbell, which is a starting point for many people. And from reading that, I was so shocked about the detrimental effects of dairy in the diet. And that was really the one thing that I still had, not a lot of, but I did have it in my diet. What I noticed when I gave it up was that and the uh, chronic tiredness that I was experiencing and the frequent colds and the regular headaches all went away. And that itself for me, even though I had no other chronic diseases, but that um, just made such a difference. Another thing I noticed was that I started to feel more joyful and I was always a pretty positive person, but just having that 
just bubbly, joyful feeling was surprising. I didn't really think it could be from the food, but then going to uh, hearing the lectures and learning more about the effects of the whole food plant-based diet, I uh, learned that actually the food processing in the colon releases those uh, factors that make us feel joyful. And beans is a big part of that, as are some of the vegetables. You know, you're an urgent care doctor, so obviously we're going to still need your services. People get burned, they get cut, they break a bone. But how much of what you see in the urgent care could have been ameliorated if people were eating a healthier diet? Yeah, a lot of it, a very lot of it, because even on, say, somebody sprains an ankle, you could think that has nothing to do with a diet, but in fact, people's health has everything to do with their motor function, their coordination, their state of mind. And if someone is, uh, is uh, doing an activity and they're, they're just not up to it with uh, energy, with a positive attitude, they're more likely to injure themselves. And so that would be the extreme of something that wouldn't even be obvious, but that can be related. There are many conditions that are so related and um, I have some recent patients that I can just share because those are the stories that really make uh, so um, make life meaningful. Because for me, my background in training was general surgery. So it wasn't that touchy feely with the patients. It was more, I can fix this problem. I can take out the appendix. I can fix the gallbladder, take that out and you'll have better health. But in the past, I would have said nothing about how diet played into the problem in the first place and how without making some type of change, they're gonna have more problems. And when I learned about the whole food plant-based diet, it just gave me a whole nother uh, perspective on, it, it really invigorated my medical practice so that I was no longer, what happened? Uh, no, are we still there? Yeah, you're still there. You're, you guys are there. Did you think you went away? Our screen went away. Yeah, our oh, screen. I'm so sorry. No, I promise you, I can see you. I can see you beautifully. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit weird looking at a blank screen. Uh oh, yeah, that, that's weird. That, you know, you mentioned the China study and, and so many of the physicians I interview and speak to, that was their point of entry. You'd think that might be required reading. It should be, yeah. I read it when I was traveling to Germany. And so on the airplane, I had, it had my full attention and it just really sent shivers down my uh, spine to think that health is so in our hands, how we can literally turn on cancer genes and turn them off. I had never heard that in medical school. I had never heard that. And many of the conditions that we were treating heart disease, for example, was always taught as something that you can help the person with medication or surgery, but never as something that you could actually reverse as Dr. Esselstyn shows us. In uh, less than three years, people's arteries can be completely clean. So well, the information was just phenomenal. I had no idea, even though I was raised with the vegetarian background, but it was really a cultural decision rather than a health uh, knowledge. And the health knowledge has been so powerful and so um, positive in my uh, practice because now I feel like I have something that truly gets at the root, the source of the problem. Yeah, so you guys have a beautiful set or it's actually, I believe Sally's Kitchen is gorgeous. Yes, it's a, this kitchen was built specifically to teach food for life classes. So, and my husband wanted to do that in conjunction with his medical practice. So we actually are connected to his medical office. So um, he's right next door <laughs> right now. That is so cool. And, and your husband's also a PCRM cooking instructor? No, he's not a cooking instructor, but he comes, you know, he's always at the classes. He facilitates, um, he talks his patients into coming to class. 
And uh, so he's always there and I'm not real comfortable in front of people. So um, it helps. Wrong job. <laughs> you picked the wrong job then. Yeah, exactly. I keep telling him that. Well, but it's what you're doing is making a difference. That's so cool. So your, your husband, is he primary care? Yes, he's a family practice physician. That's so cool that, that he's offering that as part of his practice. I know a lot, a lot of the doctors like Dr. Wayne Dysinger are doing things like that, either virtually or in person. I think that's so cool. Yeah, he is on the plant-based physician list. If you, you know, if you Google plant-based plant -based physicians, um, he pops up on the map. So. And, and what is his name? Calvin Kubo. Okay, great. That's, and, and Bakersfield is where he practices, right? In Bakersfield. Great. So what are you guys going to make for us today? We okay. are making oatmeal. <laughs> We're making yeah. oatmeal. I wanted to also um, say that in my morning routine, this is this is uh, what we're doing. Is um, I'm going to I start out with uh, three cups of water, and I add half a lemon, and I drink that down. In the summer, I have it cool. In the in the winter, I warm the water to just like it's almost like a tea. And um, I'll take that with my vitamin B12 and usually a little bit before I eat. It takes about, if you drink the whole thing at once, it takes about five minutes for it to go through your stomach. So it doesn't take a long time if you're not um, coordinated and getting everything done properly uh, in sequence, which usually in the morning you can count on being tired and not focused. So having a things that are really simple is, is the way to go. Then, so after the water, um, then I get the last few things. Uh, John and I always have breakfast together. Uh, even if I come home late, like last night, I showed up at 12 midnight um, because I work in uh, another city. So anyway, we'll do what we do because it's all quick and easy. And, Sally's got everything ready to show us the steps. Okay, so for those of you who have an Instant Pot, which I love the Instant Pot, it's so easy because you put everything in, you set it, and then you can walk away and do other things. And when you come back, your food is all ready. So we are gonna start with um, our water. We have three cups of water here. We're just gonna pour it into the Instant Pot. And for the demonstration, we could not find oat groats at the grocery store. So we actually have steel cut oats and um, two cups. So we're just gonna put that in. And I am gonna give it a quick stir. I just put it right in there. Oh, this is uh, Dr. Mercer. Uh, there's a question from TS. Is Dr. Mercer with Kaiser? If so, is there a way to search for which doctors at Kaiser are whole food plant-based? We are working on that. To my knowledge, we don't have a list at this point, but I could check in, into that. That's what we good because for people that are on Kaiser, they, they I get asked that a lot. And really all I know is, is you, I know Dr. Steve Lawenda in the, where is he, in Lancaster or area? And then there's a few in Sacramento that I know of, but that would be really cool if they would have a list. We have Dr. Benjamin Ha here in Riverside with our Kaiser. And uh, I know that he conducts regular uh, meals, uh, lunch. Uh, I think it's about once a, uh, once a month that he has these uh, uh, opportunities for people in the community to join on a meal with the doctor. And then they'll do education as well. Oh, you'll have to introduce me to him and I'll have him on the show. That's amazing. Oh, yes. He was one of the authors of that Kaiser paper that talked about the benefits of the plant-based diet. I definitely have to meet him. We can talk about that. Okay. Okay, we have our, our water and our oats in the Instant Pot and I am going to turn it on and it's hard to read this upside down. Let me turn it around just for a sec. I should say that the, the oat groats, which is a funny name, and 
It's uh, G R O A T S. Is uh, the whole oats with the kernel, just uh, as it comes. And when uh, I was first trying to buy it, I would find it at health food stores in a one or two pound bag. And so when uh, I was uh, trying to figure out how to get more, John and I went to a feed store and they have the 25 pounds of oats or 50 pounds of oats. And so we took that home only to realize that it comes with a husk. And so that ended up going to the birds, literally. And then I realized that I could order them through the health food store. And so they have organic oats, the whole grain uh, that can be ordered in uh, 25 pounds. And when you eat it on a regular basis, it, um, it go, you go through it pretty quick. And the other thing I learned from Sally was that you can have oats in place of rice and use it instead of what we're gonna do is cook this for 20 minutes. But if you do it as rice, as a rice alternative, what you would do is uh, cook it for five minutes and let it cool for uh, two hours. Let, uh, let the, um, the instant the, pot cool for two yeah. hours, naturally yeah. release. This would be with the instant pot. Wow. And uh, so that would um, be a, another way to do it, which I haven't done yet, but I'm excited uh, through learning more for, uh, for today, uh, learning that part. So I'll use that in the future instead of rice. Yeah, I love oat groats. I like the texture better than, you know, the rolled oats. Uh -huh. Much tastier, yes. They're more toothsome and chewy. And you're right, they can be a substitute for rice and just in any dish. Have you been doing that then? Not a lot, but we do, you know, they are harder to find because Whole Foods doesn't sell them or Trader Joe's or the regular store, but we have a store called Clark's Nutrition in Rancho Mirage that does sell them at bulk fairly reasonably. And you can always get them on Amazon or Bob's Red Milk. They're always available online. I wish more people would try them because they're very good. It's a, it's a great secret. And the other thing I found when I have the oat groats for breakfast is that I never come to the point where I'm really hungry. So somehow it's keeping the energy level up the whole day. And I've waited for John coming out of surgery um, eight hours. I know one day it was even 12 hours uh, before he got home. And I just kept doing other things. And by the time we ate, it was 12 hours later. And I never had that slump. And it's the only thing I've had for breakfast that has been able to really keep me full the whole day without coming to the point of being so ravenously hungry. So it does a great job as far as uh, keeping the blood sugar stable. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, they, it has that stick to the ribs quality. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Susan says steel cut oats are not oat groats, correct? They have some processing. Yes. So they're cut and they're, they're, they're minimally processed, but they are cut with a sharp blade. So they cook a little bit quicker. When you say waiting for John to come out of surgery, he wasn't having surgery. He was doing surgery, right? He was doing surgery. He's a general surgeon. Yes. And has he discovered that some of his patients might not have needed the operations if they had eaten the way he does, which is the way you eat? Yes, and he does mention it to his patients and he has had patients take him up on it. He's also mentioned it to other physicians. And one physician was so ill that he was not able, able to get out of bed. He had to have physical therapy. Um, really, it was, it was uh, questionable whether he would even survive. And he mentioned it to him, his wife got on board. They started uh, bringing him the food at the hospital and in rehab. And in a number of months, he ended up going back to work, which is truly amazing. And there's just nothing out there that will give people that kind of help, that kind of reversal when things are that dire. Yeah. It's, it's encouraged a lot of people. Of course, you get some people that make that option that uh, they cannot get past the thinking of of what they're giving behind. So it really has to be more looking forward. I use the example with patients. I say, if you, if you buy new clothes, do you throw away what you have in your closet? And the answer is usually no, because you're still emotionally attached. 
but you end up wearing the new items. And so if we focus on the new, then it's easier to move forward than uh, trying to think of everything we're gonna give up. Yep. So we have the oats ready. We do have a pot of uh, groats that we cooked earlier that is totally ready. So we are going to um, go ahead and serve that up. First, I'm gonna show you, um, we have here chia seeds, flax seeds, and hemp hearts. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna combine those all into a container and um, then we're gonna shake it up and you can put a tablespoon of this on your, uh, on your oats. These are all good things to have because of the omega-3s that you get from all these ingredients, so. Some of the things here, if a person is dealing with a weight issue, if they're dealing with addictive personality, uh, you wanna keep that in mind because if weight is an issue, then the, the nuts are not necessary and uh, the seeds, anything fattening is uh, going to make it more difficult. And so if uh, weight is not an issue, then you can keep that in mind because if weight is not an issue or addiction, then it's easier to stick with a certain amount. But if, it, if it's an issue, um, there's so many alternatives that you're not gonna miss out for sure, because there's nothing that is better than good health and energy and happiness. And you get that when you have, when you eat the right foods, it will give you that happiness. How are the, how is the food at Kaiser that they serve the patients? I've known that some hospitals, it's, it's deplorable. How's Kaiser doing with what they're serving in the cafeteria and to the patients in the hospital? Sadly, I haven't gone to the cafeteria in years. <laughs> because <laughs> when, I, when I switched, I found that I needed to be in control of my food. And the only way I could be in control of my food was to plan ahead the night before when I wasn't uh, rushing out the door. And uh, so I, I started doing that, but I know in California, every hospital has to have a plant-based uh, vegan option. So that has changed over the last maybe three or four years that that was uh, voted in. So it's a lot easier for people who are patients now, but Sometimes it's really sad though what they consider vegan because they still put jello on your tray. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we're putting the uh, fruit on right now. We have the uh, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries with all those uh, colors and phytonutrients and the combination of flax and chia and hemp put seeds. Some cinnamon in there too. Cinnamon also. The uh, flaxseed and the chia seeds can be ground up in the coffee maker so that it's more available to us. Otherwise, if you have the flaxseed uh, whole, it more it still benefits, but it'll benefit a different area. It'll be beneficial for the colon and not so much for reducing cholesterol or yeah, helping us with those uh, anti-inflammatory omega-3 benefits. Is that what you eat for breakfast too, Sally? Um. I actually do a lot of times, I will do smoothies. Um, I like green smoothies. So I have a, a Vitamix pitcher that I stuff as tightly as I can with kale. And then I add water to that and maybe um, a banana, a frozen banana and about a half a cup of frozen berries. And that hides me over for quite a long time during the day. So. I, uh, I have actually been living in the mountains since the COVID thing started. And um, so I do that and I go work outside. I uh, <laughs> cut trees and things like that. I use a chainsaw and I have my tractor. And so I spend quite a lot of time outside during the day doing that kind of thing. And um, I, I don't usually get too hungry while I'm working. So um, and I don't eat breakfast right away in the morning. I have a devotional time. And 
So I don't usually eat until about 10 a.m. And then after that, I'm usually outside until about six. So then I come in and make myself something to eat. I like having rice and beans and a big salad on top. I kind of make a bowl, just a big bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you guys both have different breakfasts, but that you enjoy them and they sustain you a long time. Yeah. Cool. What do you have for dinner, Dr. Mercer? Or do you cook for John or is he always doing surgery? So he's home late every night. He comes home for, well, I wait for him. So normally he'll be home either at lunch or at um, five o'clock. And he likes his food very simple. So we'll have a mixed salad. Often that we get at Costco uh, with everything ready. We'll add the lemon and um, tomatoes, add a few things to it. But our dressing is typically lemon. I haven't uh, taken the time to get into some of the other dressings, but the uh, lemon is quick and easy. And it does so much to alkalinize our system. So that's what uh, we have the salad and then we'll have um, a complex starch, either potatoes or um, a lot of times we'll have lentils or some other beans. And, and with that, one other vegetable, that's usually what we have. Pretty basic, corn on the cob, things like that. Oh, it sounds good. Do you ladies, well, it sounds like you're like all day outside, Sally. So you're kind of getting your activity. And what about you, Dr. Mercer? Do you have time to exercise with your busy schedule? I do. I started taking up mountain biking and uh, then there's a weekly hiking group that I lead in uh, uh, on Sunday mornings. So either the hiking or the biking, and then if not on the days that I can't do the longer activity, I'll at least uh, do a one mile uh, around the neighborhood. Nice. You guys have any pets that you exercise with? <laughs> I have a dog, yes. Nice. I don't currently have any animals that are domesticated. There are a lot of deer that come to our property um, in the mountains. And actually what we found kind of interesting is when they're injured, they hang around our property and I can get within eight to 10 feet of them and they're not afraid of me at all. They, you know, they see me out there all day and I've kind of heard that animals can smell if you eat other animals and so i kind of i kind of think maybe that's why they're not afraid to be there um we had a doe that had an injured foot and i would turn the sprinklers on for some of my plants and she would actually come up onto my deck and stand there where the sprinkler sprinkler would hit her to cool her off a little and she didn't mind that I was out there. And I have chick months that run up to me and look at me and kind of tease me like, nah, 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 and then they flick their tail and run off. And um, so there are a lot of uh, wildlife animals out there that, that I really enjoy being able to be around. And you know, you don't get that in Bakersfield. You don't have deer walking up to you or chipmunks or anything like that, so. That's so cool. Well, then they, they, they probably, like you say, sense that, that you're vegan. Uh, Dr. Mercer, what's the most common thing you see in the urgent care these days? A lot of diabetic complications. And so I can refer to some of the patients I've seen very recently. Uh, for example, I had a guy with a hemorrhoid. It started uh, two days ago, three days ago. And so he was very worried about that. And with the exam, it turned out, yes, it was a hemorrhoid and not some other tumor that suddenly popped up, which he also thought maybe it could be that because um, conditions run together. And his, in addition to his hemorrhoid, he also had a lot of anxiety. And so we talked about the hemorrhoid, the uh, basic things to do, which is uh, uh, following a high fiber diet but not taking the fiber as a supplement, but eating the foods that are high in fiber and avoiding those foods that lack the fiber, which is anything from an animal. So we got to talking about his diet and it turned out he had watched the documentary, What the Health. And so that 
information was already something familiar, something he had thought about. He wasn't doing it. But just with a little bit of uh, encouragement and talking about how his whole health, not just the uh, problem that he came from, the hemorrhoid, would be altered and how he would have more energy and uh, it would help the anxiety. And so he was very uh, motivated to give that a try. And then there was another patient that I was able to share. He is um, early forties and he had, his wife had just given birth. And what happened with that was that he, when I looked at his labs, I saw that his uh, kidney function was impaired for years, for uh, at least three, four years that he was being followed by the, by the nephrologist. And uh, then the most recent uh, creatinine was normal. And so that really got me curious as to how that happened. I had my suspicion that he must have done a plant-based diet. So when I went in and I saw him, he looked great because his weight was at where he would be when he was in high school. And uh, so I thought maybe his wife and uh, the whole family had adopted it. He said he did start the plant-based diet about a year ago. And I said, so do you cook? No, he doesn't cook. Does your wife do this? No, she doesn't. How do you do it? He said, I keep it very simple. I get salad kits, I um, get the beans, I just follow the diet and he was following it very carefully. And it wasn't a big deal for him. He wasn't setting himself aside. He just made sure he planned ahead. And so his kidney function had gone from uh, going in the direction where he would at some point need dialysis to where it was completely normal, which is just phenomenal. It's, it's a true miracle. That's terrific. So, so I, I can share that story with people that are, especially guys that wonder, how can I do this? I don't cook. Um, and sometimes it's the spouse is just not ready to do it. So it needs to be a personal journey because we can't make other people change, but we can take care of our own health and then be an example. And usually when we move forward, other people are very attracted to that and they want to also make that change, just like we see when people bring uh, plant-based uh, food to a potluck. It's usually the item that goes so that it's hard for the person who's plant-based to even get some for themselves. You have to get in line first <laughs> or it's all gone by the time you get there. Generally, that's the case. Um, the other person, uh, uh, in a uh, condition that we see a lot of is uh, urinary tract infections. A lot of women deal with that. And so with the urinary tract infection, we think, how does that have anything to do with the diet? But again, it turns out that the, uh, they trace the DNA of the, um, of the uh, bacteria that you get in the urine, which is often E. coli. The E. coli is uh, shown be, to have the same DNA that they get from um, the chicken. So people giving up eating chicken can help, uh, women can help them with their urinary tract infections. And uh, sometimes uh, people come in and they have so many allergies to antibiotics that there's no option for them to even take an oral antibiotic. They might need an IV antibiotic if they need the IV antibiotic, um, they sometimes need a daily visit to the urgent care or doctor's office to get the IV, or they have a line put in so that they can do that at home. Uh, another thing that uh, makes a difference within a few days is often these uh, difficult organisms are not even hard to treat. If people start incorporating the um, greens into their diet within two, three days, the bacteria in the urine is gone. Wow. And I saw that with one woman who literally had no options. She was allergic to everything and she was um, not responding to antibiotics. So there was no match for her. So we really had nowhere to go with me uh, medication. And I was talking to her about what, uh, asking her about her diet, first of all. And she basically ate at, um, a fast food restaurant every day. 
And um, her husband was sitting behind her and I started uh, asking her, well, could you do a smoothie? Because the idea of eating vegetables for her was so unpalatable. It had to be wrapped in some other form. And so she thought she could do a smoothie. Her husband behind her was so desperate to have her do better. They went right away to Costco, got a Vitamix and started making smoothies. And when I followed up with her, we got another urine. And that's where I learned that as short as three days, the uh, infection could be gone. So in her case at work, of course, not, not every case, but just the power that in many cases, people can get better when they start increasing the greens in their diet. Yeah, absolutely. So Mary Jane says she gets chronic UTIs and was told to avoid lemon. Is there any truth in that? Uh, I know I've heard that said um, that too much citrus can cause irritability of the bladder, but not that it would cause a UTI. So some of these things are shared because people have heard them, but um, no. Lemon itself, especially if you're not um, just having that much, is uh, actually going to alkalinize your system so that you're like less likely to have infections. Yeah. At, uh, Susan is saying, how could you take the oat growths and make them a savory recipe? Oh, yes. OK. So the savory recipe is what we were talking about, where you take it for five minutes. You prepared. This is all in the Instant Pot. Put it in the Instant Pot, Do it, um, heat it for five minutes and then let it cool for two hours. When you take it out, you fluff it just like rice, and then you can use it with any of the dishes. You can have it with beans, you can have it with uh, salad. Anything that you would normally eat rice with, you could uh, use the oat groats. Yeah, absolutely. It's so good, so good. Wow, is your doggy there? Can we see your doggy? I don't have her here, no. Oh, what kind is she? She's a bigger dog. Um, she's some kind of a sheep dog. Nice. We got her at a, at a, she, she was adopted. So we're not sure exactly what kind of dog she is, but she's a good size, more like a German shepherd. Wow. They do have that DNA testing for dogs. I did that on my, not the dog I have now because the, the shelter knew exactly what she was, but my last two dogs, we did it. And on one of them, it was like obvious. And the other one was like, there's no way it could be. This. <laughs> it was it was just kind of something fun, you know? Oh, for sure. Yep. So uh, what are the doctor's thoughts on soy? Tiffany wants to know. Oh, soy. Okay. <clears throat> soy is a wonderful food that we have overlooked. And, uh, and actually it's been used by industry to make people afraid to have soy. But over and over, the research actually shows that women, even who have had breast cancer, do much better if they continue to consume soy. And uh, not that the whole diet should be soy, but to have a serving every day increases longevity. and. It shows also Dr. Mark Messina from Loma Linda is one uh, uh, PhD that has done extensive research on soy. Over and over, the research that we get on soy is that it's a benefit. And of course, you want to make sure that it's organic, which uh, generally the uh, food soy that you get is, is um, uh, the uh, tofu or the uh, soy milk is going to be organic. But edamame be, um, beans would be a great way to get the soy. And you could use that instead of other beans. And so there should be no fear in taking soy because what it does is it blocks the ex estrogen receptors. So rather than making people more susceptible to cancer, women for uh, uh, breast cancer, it's actually a benefit. And for example, in countries where people use a lot of soy, in their daily uh, diet, they're not having higher rates of cancer or breast cancer or, or, breast, or um, for men, prostate cancer. And certainly men are not having breasts in, in Asia where people have a diet with regular soy consumption. They don't have the uh, gynecomastia or the enlargement of the breasts until they come to the United States and they're getting the high fat animal fat mm -hmm. diet. 
Wow. That's something. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Barnard talks about this a lot in his books, you know? Oh, yes. Yep. So there's a question from Miriam. What do you think of gluten and hypothyroidism? Is there a link? I know Dr. Goldhammer has mentioned it for Hashimoto's at least. I could not speak to that. I, I, um, I haven't heard. So I just, I can't say, I, I know that for myself, I try to avoid the gluten because I feel better without it. I think that the, um, the einkorn form would be a different situation where it's organic and it's a, a flour that is very low. But in my diet, I really have gotten away from having breads and, and uh, other baked uh, items where I'm having regular exposure to wheat because I find that it has more of a sugar-like effect. And so aside from the gluten, it's also that part where I just get tired after I have it because you get that sugar rush. And so that would be the main reason why I stay away from it. Yeah. Did either of you lovely ladies ever have weight problems? <laughs> I have not. I have never had a weight problem. I'm about the same uh, close to what I was um, in high school. Uh, I did want to lose five pounds. Um, and when I did, what I did was uh, just powerful and that I've adopted more recently is uh, the uh, restricted eating. And a lot of people are fasting. doing that. You get, you try to get your food in, in a, a space of uh, six to eight hours. I try for six hours. So usually eight o'clock and two o'clock. And then I'm done for the day. I'll have uh, water uh, after that or tea without anything added. And um, I feel much better with that. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about it. I'm actually having there. I don't know if you know Michael, Dr. Michael Royzen from the Cleveland Clinic. He just wrote a book about that, what to eat when. And he's going to be on the show next week. Talk, there's so many doctors talking about that time restricted feeding that it's got a lot of benefits. What about you, Sally? Do you ever struggle with your weight? I did, but my problem was being underweight. So I did not weigh a hundred pounds until after I graduated from high school. And um, at five foot six, a hundred pounds really is not very much weight. So um, over the next year, I did gain five pounds, but um, it was, you know, a struggle for me to even maintain weight. Now, my first year of college, I shot up there, but I was so excited. I gained 25 pounds by Christmas and I was so excited because I, for the first time, actually was able to walk into a store and buy clothes off the rack. I started making my clothes when I was 13 because I couldn't buy things that would fit me. So, so um, I can't relate to either of you. <laughs> 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 you know, that my weight normalized more and um, I kind of gained weight when I became vegan and everybody, you know, and if, if I tell them that in class, they're all like, oh my goodness, you know, it's just, it's crazy because they don't want to gain weight. They want to lose weight. But my experience has been that if you're eating plant-based you tend to normalize at what would be an ideal weight for yeah. you. So even though I gained weight, it was a good thing for me. So, um, you yeah. know. Well, you, you know, you, I'm sure both of you know that most people, it's the opposite. They struggle with their weight. So does that, is that like a foreign concept to you? Because I, I always wonder like with my husband, what does he think of all of us? Because the, the struggle so much when you haven't struggled. It, for me, it's not a foreign concept because I just think of it as I'm at the opposite end, but on the same spectrum, you know, because I mean, people would really look at me strangely when they would see the amount of food that I was eating and they would go, where are you putting that? Because, you know, and I, like I would have two big, huge full plates of food and they just didn't understand Um my sister and I did this one time where we started going to a gym and I actually got kicked out of the gym because I lost five pounds and I was trying to gain weight. So I was eating monstrous amounts of food and my sister was eating salad 
and the five pounds that I lost, she gained. And so she, she thought that was quite unfair, but, um, you know, it just never made any sense why I was so underweight and, um, you get called just as many names when you're underweight as you do when you're overweight. So, you know, there's a lot of bullying that goes on when you're in school and stuff like that. So from that standpoint, I understand the problem that the people had who were overweight because I had the same problem, wow. but I was underweight. I was gonna say too, it's a struggle for patients because when they want to lose weight and they're in a family where everyone is overweight they have a lot of pushback yeah in that journey trying to get healthier because they're leaving their tribe and so that's very threatening to those people who are are not wanting to make that change yeah your your husband's a surgeon dr mercer a lot of the people he operates on overweight because last time i interviewed a surgeon they were saying it's it's even more risky because it's you know to to operate on somebody overweight just because of what they have to go through just to get to what they're doing. Absolutely. It's, well, it's especially for abdominal issues, it's hard to, for example, if a person is very overweight, they may not even fit into the CAT scan to be able to see mm -hmm. if they have appendicitis, if it's a gallbladder, or if there's an issue with their colon for diverticulitis. And so it's a risky thing. And, um, just uh, even as accessing, there's uh, issues with the uh, lung issue, uh, with intubation. When people are put to sleep, they have to have healthy lungs. And when the whole body is diseased, there's just so much risk with, with uh, surgical intervention or uh, even antibiotics. Uh, everything is putting them at a disadvantage. Yeah. Shane asks a question. Where did it go? Gosh, this moves fast. It's about if there's just as much, where did it go? I, if I make a smoothie and add greens and spinach, will I get the same benefits if I eat it as a salad and chew it? What, what's the question? If, if, if you take greens like spinach and make a smoothie, will she get as much benefit if she just chewed it and ate it as a salad? Well, with the chewing, there's the benefit of uh, releasing those hormones that make a chewing is very calming. And so when people are chewing, it calms them down. And you don't get that with a smoothie unless you take the time to sometimes people would uh, leave the uh, smoothie a little bit more coarse so that you have something to chew. And how do you do a it? chunky instead of a smoothie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I actually chew my smoothie, even though there's really not things to chew. I don't just take it in and swallow it. I actually go through the motion of chewing, even though it's it's pretty much liquid. Um, I also add either chia seeds or flax seeds to my smoothies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I also add oats to if I want it a little thicker. So um, sometimes they're kind of chewable. The salad is better. But the smoothie is that ability to still have that when you don't think you can have the salad. If you're in a brush and you're going somewhere or you're just not able to accommodate a salad and you can plan ahead with the smoothie, um, it would uh, fit in that setting. But if, if somebody can have a salad, that would be better. If you don't have any teeth, the smoothie would be a great option. Exactly. <laughs> You know, the, I heard the pressure cooker beep. So do you release the pressure instantly or do you let it come down to pressure naturally? Usually let it come down for a while. Um, I, I like to wait at least 15 minutes before I do the quick release. So looks like we've been done for about six minutes. That's the time that's on the, on the display here. So uh, I would wait a little longer otherwise especially with um, oats or things that have quite a lot of water in it, you get a lot of uh, spray mm -hmm. coming out. So I would wait until at least 15 minutes before doing a, a quick release. Yeah, that's good. I continue that. Well, you guys are great. Do you, do you, so uh, Dr. Mercer, you don't teach classes together though. This is your first time doing something together. 
This is our first time doing something together. <laughs> uh, Sally's husband is already excited about the possibility of us partnering. So yeah. who knows? We'll see. Well, good. Well, this was your this was your um, introduction to. to yeah. do this, so so yeah. if, he, if he, he can watch the he can watch the replay if he wants to make sure it's a good fit. Yeah, yeah he kept asking me uh, about what we were what platform we were going to be on and what time we were going to be on so he can tell his patients. And I was like, I don't know anything. I don't know uh, the technology side of it is not my thing. I have no idea how we're getting on, whether we're using Facebook Live or Zoom or whatever. So I couldn't give him any information this morning. So well, he can definitely watch the replay for sure. Any parting words of wisdom either of you would like to share with our audience? I had one more patient uh, uh, situation. It was a dental infection. And another thing that we see is that when people go to a whole food plant-based diet, the plaque on their teeth is less, the dental uh, condition improves. And so these are all conditions apart from the normal diabetes, heart disease that I could have talked more about that are not always thought about, but that uh, people even without significant health issues can look forward to having a, a benefit from. Well, I, I that's, do you, can, are you allowed to in your, in your job as a doctor, just kind of like hand everybody something when they come in for any reason, like about being plant-based or that's not allowed? Like, you know, the China study sells this little kind of book, like an introductory book. Like, can you just like, we do. We have the after visit summary. And in that after visit summary, I have uh, resources. I have your book, the previous one. I've ordered the current one. I'm still waiting for that. And um, I, uh, so I give them the links and, and then I um, mention a specific item for them to look up so that they're not overwhelmed, including uh, Dr. Greger's uh, d uh, daily dozen so that they have an idea what to uh, try to put on in their um, diet every day. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, there's a lot of support and it doesn't take long. I, I can mention these things in a matter of one, two minutes. It's so quick. And then with adding the information into the after uh, visit summary, if people do have an interest, then they have the ability to educate themselves. Any of your colleagues, uh go on plant-based because of anything you've said? Oh, yes. We have a good number in my department that are practicing and a lot more that are on the way doing it and uh, having more options so that it's uh, everyone knows that we have a good number of plant-based uh, people in our department, both nurses and physicians. And so it's not something that is so um, odd now and I have to say that pretty much every function, there's there's going to be food that's available for us now. That's great. Yeah, because you know when I, we haven't been able to volunteer for over six months, but when I volunteered at the hospital, anytime I would go visit the staff, which is also part of my job in the pet therapy department, the food was not very healthy. What they'd have in the you know in the break rooms. <laughs> Yeah, all the donuts and the pastries and the cookies. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it was gifts from thankful patients, but it was, you know, like C's candy and those chocolate chip cookies from Costco and just like a lot of that stuff is what I saw. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot, and for a lot of them, the you know, nurses, some of them, especially the ones watching monitors, it's a fairly sedentary job, you know? So. Yeah, very risky too, being sedentary like that. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you, ladies. It's been great. Well, catching up, not really catching up with you if I just met you, but for you, Dr. Mercer, catching up with you. You know, a long time ago, you came to my home in Sherman Oaks and took my class and there was another doctor with you. And I can't remember his name. I want to say like Mario. Robinson. Did he ever go plant-based? Because I don't think he was when I met him. Oh, he had a fabulous story. He and I actually partnered up at uh, the Kaiser where I work. And we uh, started presenting to the uh, administration. And so that really changed things for our department and I mean, for our hospital. And uh, for anyone who has uh, watched that Game Changers, 
there's uh, two kinds of physicians, Dr. Columbus Batiste and Dr. Helen Moon from oncology. And uh, Dr. Batiste is from cardiology from our hospital. And all of that really developed from a lot of it from uh, Dr. Mario Robinson's involvement in, in uh, putting together presentations for administration. And he also started and invited uh, every year we have a plant-based uh, physician, con uh, not a conference, but a noon conference. And uh, he's had people like Dr. Br um, uh, Dr. Deal was there and we had um, Dr. Furman, Dr. Greger, uh, we've had um, Dr. Uh, Goldblum, uh, Goldner. So yes, he's been very instrumental and he's, he personally had a lot of GI issues, went through all the uh, endoscopies and uh, upper and lower trying to figure out why he was having all these uh, GI issues. and. It wasn't until he became plant-based that all of that cleared up. And so that, that's his story and it's, it's made a huge difference for his life and his practice. Because then having better health didn't only just help him to feel better, but then he also got really fit. So that's the other thing you would see. He just looks fantastic. Oh, I, well, tell him I said hello. I okay, remember him. Yeah. He was very nice. Well, thank you both for the work that you're doing to spread the plant-based message to people. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you again and, and catching more of the guests on your show. That. Well, speaking of guests on the show, if you come back at 4 p.m. today, I have Joanna Merzer. She is the wife of my co-author, Glenn Merzer, who's going to be cooking up recipes from Own Your Health. So I hope you'll come back. Thanks again, Dr. Mercer and Sally. And thank you all for watching another episode. Please come back at 4 p.m. today. And I can also tell you tomorrow, we have another wonderful chef named Chris Kendall on the show. Thanks again, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.